Welcome to PLZ Soccer's f- 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 PLZ Soccer's <laughs> football show live. I'll tell you, it's been a long <laughs> while. <laughs> it's a long while since I've been on the show. Uh, welcome to the show on YouTube channel. All you have to do is hit that subscribe button, as we say every week. Um, a little bit flustered. It was uh, it was a bit here. I'm scared. I'm getting on air there, Tam. But I'm delighted you're with me. Ruffy's still feeling poorly, Tam. So hopefully, with a bit of luck, he's going to be back in Monday. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully, the big man's okay. He's, he's suffering a wee bit there now, um, but he's. I th- I'm sure he'll be fine. I'm sure once he's a, a, a couple of gins, he'll be feeling a lot better. Absolutely, as ever, um, lots of people are uh, enjoying our competitions and here's one that uh, Kerry gives you the chance to get a fantastic canvas print signed by the man himself. PLZ Soccer has teamed up with one of Scotland's leading sports artists, Geo Thompson, to give you the chance to win the signed print of Celtic star Jota. To win with the chance of winning this fantastic prize, all you have to do is answer this simple question. Which country does Jota come from? Leave your answer in the comment section below and to double your chances of winning, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Good luck. Yeah, absolutely good luck with that. It's a good uh, prize. I know Gio himself um, has uh, so many great paintings of Scottish players, legends as well, uh, and he's going to make it a regular feature for us. Yeah, brilliant. I think that, listen, he's very popular. I think a lot of people go to him uh, to get their favourite player you know, painted and maybe get it signed. So, no, I, th- I think that... Uh, that is a brilliant prize for, for any Celtic fan or any football fan, really. Yeah, absolutely. So good luck with the competition. Uh, the quiz question, obviously, is, uh, you know what you like, you read the, the headlines, and I think to myself, I'll, I'll come up with something that'll get people uh, really thinking. So this one, Tam, when was the last time Everton won the top flight league in England? Because obviously the the uh, link at the, the moment is with Sean Dyche, um, who has been linked with the job. So I thought to myself, I'll throw in a wee Everton uh, question. And remember, when they last won it, the team they had was unbelievable. I wonder if you could uh, even guess at some of the well, players. Maybe the, well, it's probably before my time as well. Yeah. It's maybe, is that Graham Sharp and Andy Gray? Is it, guys like that? Maybe? It's, it's, that was the 85 team, but this one, uh, Sharpie is in there. Yep, yeah. you're absolutely right. It's uh, oh, sure, maybe. Trevor Stephen. Mm, um, really good, really good uh, team. Okay, you're going 1988. What year do you think? Have a wee guess yourself. We'll give you the answer at the end of the programme. Thanks to so many of you for joining us. And of course, uh, well done to our previous competition winners. We'll announce the winner of this competition on Monday. You've still got another chance to join us on Saturday to enter the competition on our uh, results show at four o'clock on YouTube. But on Monday, we'll announce the winner. And then next week, we're giving away a replica Real Madrid shirt with uh, Luka Modric's number on the back. That's what you do when you head into the shop. You make sure you think competition prizes ahead of time, Tom. Yeah, but again, a great prize for anyone. For me, Luka Modric, one of the best central midfield players in the last you know, 20 years. And European world football, so you get his jersey as well. Uh, with a great, a great prize, a great present for someone. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, lots to talk about. Here's how the fixtures look over the weekend, and there's lots of discussion on movement uh, across the Scottish Premiership too. We'll hear from uh, the key managers involved in the big games. Hibs against Aberdeen is one that everybody's got their eye on. Rangers against St Johnston, Ross County, Kilmarnock. St Mirren against Motherwell, it's Livingston Hearts and Dundee United against Celtic. So you can give us your prediction on that. We'll offer you our prediction over the course of the one hour show. Tam, moves that looked as if they were Stonewall certainty suddenly have fallen by the wayside. Kevin Nisbet, down there at Millwall, had a change of heart. Yeah, an interesting one. I thought that uh, obviously the, the, the fee was agreed with Hibs, everything was agreed. The player went down with his agent. And uh, whether he's got cold feet, He's seen Millwall or the training ground, they met the manager, who knows? Maybe there's something just not right and he's decided against it. Or maybe his agent, his representatives have had wind of another possible move Mm. uh, somewhere. So, listen, we we wait to see what happens next. But, you know, I think for for everyone, I think the best outcome would be Hibs to get a kind of big fee for him and Kevin to move on. I think it would be great for him as well. You know, and I'm, I'm kind of surprised that Rangers are not not sniffing about Kevin Nisbet, I think for the money, two million. I think when you look at Rangers as strikers at the minute, I think Kamar Roof, you know, he's been injured a lot. Cholak's been injured. Morelos is definitely going to not get me away in the, in the summer. You know, he's he's going to run his contract down. I think Kevin Nisbet would score 20 goals for Rangers easily in the yeah. Premier League. So whether Rangers have got that kind of money at the minute, you know, maybe they've got other targets. I don't know. It's, it's not really a, a priority for them at the minute. But 
I think Ranger supporters looking at that going, you know, he's going for £2 million, Kevin Nisbet. I think a lot of Rangers fans would take him for £2 million. Yeah, it, it's still unclear. Maybe he just uh, went down to Millwall, had a wee look at it and thought, mm, don't fancy it. Um, over and above that, um, you know, when you think of... Uh, Ryan Porteous going down as well to talk to Watford and then you think, OK, that could be potentially £3 million. There's not a lot of time left. Yes, you can bring in the quality youngsters you're thinking about, but it could be that he needs results and quickly, so that means if anybody leaves, you've got to get somebody in uh, in a short space of time. Yeah, listen, I think that there will surely be you know stuff in the background at Hibs in the recruitment department. You know, ready for players to come in. <laughs> Please, with no, dire- with no director <laughs> of football <laughs> and, a, and a previous campaign that everybody slaughtered them That's for. That's the thing. A lot of Hibs supporters, are, are, I think, are quite comfortable with when Nisbet or Portis leaving. But the, the the terrifying thing is, who are they going to bring in to replace them? And uh, because the record of of signings over the last eighteen months to two years has been poor, so I think that the, the Hibs fans would like to get the big fee in for them. They know they know both players are not going to sign a new contract. You know, so you want to get the money in for them, but the, the big thing for, for every Hibs supporter is are we going to get quality replacements in, in time? You know, Stuart Finlay's been linked, I think he'd be a solid signing. Um, they're still looking at Bailey Wright at Sunderland, another centre back. You know, so, and I'm sure they've got irons in the fire in terms of a striker, so uh, who knows what's going to happen. But if, if Hibs lose Portis and Nisbet without getting any replacements in before the window, that's going to be a big problem at Hibs. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think the fans will be too happy. So we sent Kerry out there to Trinent to find out what was going down today. Hibs take on Aberdeen this weekend at Easter Road in a game where both managers will be looking for a performance and a win from their team. But this boss believes that his side are moving in the right direction. I know we're going into two games that if we, if things go for us and we win the games, you know, we could be anywhere between fifth and fourth. And uh, like for me, at this moment in time, for where we are, that would actually show signs of we are sort of superseding, if you like, what we should be doing, given what we've had. So and the scenarios that we faced and the challenges that we face. So like simply the focus, the prize on Saturday is to go above Aberdeen with a win. And then obviously we've got another important game on Tuesday night away to Ross. Yeah, OK, he's looked as far ahead as two games. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know he's looked ahead as five transfer windows at one point, um, but quite simply, he's got to hope that they can get something. I know some of the papers picked up on the old El Sakiko, which I think is rather sad about the situation because there seems to be at times a frenzy, Tam, you know, when managers are under pressure to, to see when they're getting sacked. Um, is Johnson really... I don't sense the same pressure for Lee Johnson that I do for Jim Goodwin. Nah, I don't think he's under the same pressure. I think that... Uh, and you need to remember, these guys are... You know, they're, they're human beings, they've got families. You know, I'm sure they don't re- like reading Neil Sackico and all this stuff in social media, so... Um, I don't think he's under the same pressure. As I said, I, I didn't think the performance was that bad against Hearts. Hearts were more clinical. Um, they've more strength and depth on the bench. You know, I, I heard them saying, you know, we could get into fourth or fifth and that would maybe supersede... You know, the expectations at Hibs, I don't think it would. I think the Hibs supporters expect Hibs to be third or fourth at, at worst. You know, they expect to be in European positions, uh, no matter the squad. I think you look at the whole club, uh, the training ground, you know, the wages that Hibs can pay. You know, Hibs have got to be in the top three or four clubs in this country, so... Is the least they can expect to try and be above Hearts? Uh, not, I don't, not this season. But no, I know, but that, right. that's, no, right. that's no, what no, Hibs fans look at. They're always judged. The Hibs are always judged against Hearts, Hearts against Hibs. You know, when Hearts won the Championship, you know, a couple of seasons ago, the Hibs fans are lauding it, you know, finished third and whatever, you know, so it, it swings in roundabouts, it comes in cycles, at the minute hearts are, are well on top, but it'll swing back again to Hibs, I'm sure it will one day, so, no, I think that uh, the next two games are, are crucial for, for Lee Johnson, but I don't think he's under the same pressure as Jim Goodwin, I think Jim Goodwin's got to win the game yeah. tomorrow. And listening to uh, Jim Goodwin, certainly in the press conference, uh, he mentioned that he is, I think, I don't think the word's grateful, but I think he's happy that the board have decided to stick with him on this one. Um, it's a it's a decision which some people are slightly miffed at. Some Aberdeen fans will not be happy about it. But, I mean, you look at it and you say to yourself, the manager has praised the board for sticking with him. They've had this heart-to-heart with this panel um, that they have that includes Willie Garner, I think Stephen Gunn and, mm-hmm. and one other. Um, so they're sticking by him, which... The amount of journalists and pundits I hear saying, you know, let's let's not be quick to fire people. Let's give them time. So Jim Goodwin has got one game 
maybe more than that or is it just you think lose the game sacked I think if he loses tomorrow I think he'll get the sack I think that looking at that looking at that statement you know it's I think the last sentence here you know he's looking for immediate results and that means he's going to Easter Road and winning I think if they go down to Hibs and get a draw and it's a battling draw I think they'll be fine but I think if they get beat you know, I think that I think I don't think he's going to keep his job. Um, you know, and it's the same thing with Aberdeen. You know, Derek McInnes, they got rid of him. You know, the fans wanted Derek McInnes out. You know, a lot of us thought, you know, it was maybe time for Derek, maybe a wee bit stale at Aberdeen. But now I think we shouldn't get rid of him. You know, because Aberdeen were consistently top three or four European places in cup finals, and they look miles away for that at the minute. You know, Stephen Glass came in lasted eleven months. It's been around about eleven months for Jim Goodwin. You know, so there's a lot of money. You know, not only bringing all their staff in, but then paying them all off. So, I think he's got, he's, you know, he's, he, if he gets this one wrong again, uh, Dave Cormack, that's the last two, basically, he's, he's got wrong. And I think the pressure on him from Aberdeen fans, you know, f for a third, you know, replacement manager would be huge. You know, it's, a, it's one he cannot afford to get to get wrong. Yeah, OK, I've got Hibs nil, Aberdeen one. <laughs> I've got Hibs to win it one nil. Um, I just think that, it's going to be a low score and they're very fair and I just think Hibs might win it 1-0. Uh, but it, no result in that game would surprise me, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I must admit it would be nervy, um, especially if you're a manager uh, track side in this one, kick, trying to kick every ball on it. I, I really feel for Jim Goodwin in this one because it's almost as if the vultures are hovering non-stop. But he knows the score, which is basically managers live or die by the results. So um, if it's a game by game, you know, he'll be hoping that they can get something. What do you think about that? Aberdeen fans, uh, are Aberdeen going to go there and step up to the plate for their manager and produce something that can get one point, maybe three? Will a point be enough? Who knows? Um, Rangers, on the Saturday against St Johnston, uh, of course, uh, Todd Cantwell is in, um, but will there be more signings in? Well, if there's not, the Rangers manager says he's not too worried. The club might have had targets that weren't necessarily fitting in, in some of my ideas and plans and, and vice versa, the ones that I want might not be available now, but Todd was and we've managed to get Todd in and if we manage to get one or two of the other names you're mentioning or one or two that you ain't got the scent on just yet, then uh, that'll be great. If we don't, I think our squad's strong enough to go to the end of the season, so it's not like I'm going to be devastated come next week if we don't get another one in we're all fully aligned we're all on the same page there's money there to spend but it's there to be spent on the right ones so he's not going to be devastated if he doesn't get any other player in i mean there's been talk about nicholas raskin um he might have certainly listening to his press conference i got that real sense tam that he said you know there's a couple of people that we are looking at that are not on your radar uh, that the journalists haven't managed to sniff out yet so you just get that feeling that maybe you can get one of those 11th hour signings that catches everybody out yes yeah, it's, it's, it's always amazing when it goes down to the last day of the window and you think to yourself you've got you've got a whole month to get a player in and there's so many deals get done in the very very last minute and um, whether that's players holding out for a better move whether that's clubs shifting players out before they can get players in it all seems to, to move into place in the last day of the window so I think Rangers, I've got a decent enough squad. Listen, they've got two cups to play for. You know, I don't think they're going to win the league. They're not going to finish third. Yeah, they've got the two cups to concentrate on. So they'll be looking to try and get players in to go straight into the team and make them stronger against uh, Celtic, firstly, in, in, in the League Cup final and then the Scottish Cup. So I think if he can get maybe Whitaker or, or Raskin in and maybe another striker, then I think it would be a great window. But I don't think it would be, I don't think it would be, you know, dismiss them if, uh, if they don't get anybody in. I, th I still think they'll be strong enough to to finish the season well. Yeah, obviously there are some players coming back. Hadji would mm. be a huge bonus for them. Cholak, uh, Suter, uh, if he makes an appearance, uh, I must admit if John Suter is fit uh, and avoids injury, I think he could be a, you know, a, a good signing for Rangers um, because I, I think he's got quality. He can certainly pass a ball out of defence as well. Um, I, just, I, I just think the Rangers fans, if he got a run of games, would see a really good player there. Yeah, listen, I think he's been unlucky with injury. We all know that over the last couple of seasons with Hearts in particular. You know, he looked as if he'd, he'd finished the season strongly with Hearts. Rangers signed him and then he picks up another injury, unfortunately, for him. Um, and it was just off the back of a sticky spell. He had a couple of games where he came in and he wasn't quite at it. So I still think there's a player there for Rangers. If he can get him back fit, um, then I, th I still think there's a, a strong player there for Rangers. But 
you know, the most important thing for him is to get himself right and get himself fit and try and get back into that Rangers team. Yeah, absolutely. Um, of course, the other signing that I'd, I'm not sure you're aware of it, Tom, but uh, Rangers seem to have signed ACDC um, for... Is that Rangers' for, 82nd strip release this season? Well, I was just about to say, this is this has come out, and by the way, <laughs> you know, no sooner has it come out than everybody's going absolutely mental about it because, quite simply, there's the strip, um, it's got ACDC on it. I think um, certainly, oh, I think maybe one, possibly two uh, of the members of the band were Rangers fans. Uh, so suddenly you've got this ACDC. Now, as you're aware, as soon as something like that comes out, everybody will start doctoring an ACDC song to fit <laughs> the Rangers one. So I am at some point going to read out, um, you know, exactly what uh, exactly what's happening uh, with regards to that. If you can come up with an ACD song, ACDC, it's easy for me to say, um, if you can come up with one of those songs um, with a Rangers slant on it, then by all means, uh, stick it in the feed. And uh, we might read some of the sensible ones out. But uh, strange one that, ACDC... Um, I must admit, I've seen them live at Hamden. They're absolutely fantastic. Yeah, they're a great band, but I just think that's just that's just a strange one from Rangers. I mean, how many strips have they had out this season? You yeah, know, got a third strip, fourth strip, fifth strip. You know, they're bringing this out. It's, it just seems to, for me, another way to kind of get money out of fans. And uh, you know, all our Rangers fans will buy it because you know they want everything that Rangers yeah. release. But it's got a good novelty value about it as well. It by is, the way, but, um, to be honest with you. Uh, uh, listen, St Johnson will not be caring a jot about that. They've got a situation where they've lost 12 of their last 22 Premiership fixtures. So, mm. you know, and they're six on the bounce. You know, it's a dismal run. Um, uh, we we're wondering, well, we've been talking about this, how he alters that run. Is it a free hit against Rangers or does he have to come up with something? I always think it's hard to play a team back to back. I always, I always think it's hard to play a team and then play them right out, you know, that's the following week. Yeah. I think you've seen that with Celtic against Kilmarnock. You know, and, uh, you know, Celtic, you know, you just expect them to blow them away. They, they, they beat Kilmarnock comfortably at Park Eden. It was only, what, 2 nothing. It could have been 6 or 7. And then at Hamden, it was a wee bit of a struggle. So I just think that St. Johnson will come down, they'll make it hard for Rangers, but I don't see any plan for him, you know, in place that he can get a result. I just think Rangers are better all over the park. St. Johnson are a poor run of form. The only kind of chance for them is, is maybe nicking a goal the first 20 minutes and holding on and defending for their lives and defending well and getting lucky but I don't see them opening up against Rangers I, I think they would, they would get tanked so I just think it'll be, it'll be two, maybe two or three nothing to Rangers and funnily enough um, you know you mentioned there that they're sniffing about Zach Rudden um, to try and get him in I mean you like Zach Rudden I think he's a good player I think he's uh, I think he's vital for Dundee trying to get out of that division um, so I mean Dundee just agreed a fee I think with Partick Thistle and that tribe you know uh, and now they're, they're possibly selling them. So St Johnson seem to have a bit of cash. Whether that's from the Scottish Cup debacle with the three stands, maybe they've got a few extra quid in their pocket because they were linked to a six-figure bid for Jordan White from Ross County. So it's clearly in the market for a, a big, tall, target man kind of striker. Um, so that maybe they've been not got Jordan White. They're going for Zach Rudden now. But I think that'd be a big blow for Dundee in terms of trying them trying to get back into the Premier League. Yeah. Um, I have to say, to, I have to say, Tom, some some, some of the ACDC songs <laughs> coming in are absolutely uh, brilliant. Can't read them out, but nevertheless, um, I think Brian Kelly's just been a, a wee bit of a, a you know. I think there's none you can read out. There's none. Well, he's well. Brian Kelly's kind of at the tip of the iceberg here. He, you know, I've got big balls, um, which is an ACD song. Oh, is it? it's, a, it's actually an ACDC song, um, but, uh, <laughs> but but there are a few others that are almost certainly. Uh, not getting mentioned, but uh, it's one of my favourite bands. Um, so thank you to so many of you um, who are talking Highway to Hell, You Shook Me All Night Long, and every variant of that. Um, <laughs> so it's always a good bit of fun. But I've got Rangers to win this one uh, emphatically uh, as well, uh, Tam, because I can't see past them on it. I say emphatically, it's a classic Ruffy. I've got Rangers 2, St Johnson. I'll go for 3 0. 3 0? Okay. Um, now, what about Dundee United against Celtic? Well, uh, this game, uh, the last time these two sides um, were going head to head up at Tannadice, it was an absolute mauling. Mm. Yeah, it was. And unfortunately for Jack Ross, you know, he, he paid the price for that. But I don't think it'd be 9 0 this time. I think Dundee have improved since then. 
Um, but I don't think they'll. I don't think they can open up against Celtic. I think that Celtic, when they get their tails up, when they get a couple of you know goals early, you seen it Easter Road, not that long ago. You know when they won four nothing, it could have been again. It could have been six or seven. You know they've just got they've got goals all over the team, whether that's from full backs, midfield players, wide men, strikers. You know they can score from every area on the pitch, and sometimes it's like red arrows at times with Celtic. You know they, they push players forward, and Dundee United will just try and stay in the game as long as they can. Maybe get the first goal. You know, and, and and make it difficult for Celtic, but I just can't see Celtic dropping anything uh, at the minute, bar Rangers and, and domestically. Um, so I think Celtic got better win. I think they win comfortable. I think I'll go for four 0 Celtic. Yeah, I've got four 0 in it as well, Tom. Um, of course, uh, they've added yet again. They finally brought in the striker O, which has prompted another raft of songs um, from various bands in Scottish football this week. It's all about linking football to pop music, but. O's come in, uh, South Korean striker, um, and of course Giacomacca's not away yet. Um, the last thing you want when you are a player uh, going to sign for a big club is you need to be on the same page as your agent. And apparently O just wanted the deal done. The agent was a little bit more cautious, and I think that brought a bit of hilarity to Ange Postecoglou. You know, his own sort of, like I said, determination to get the deal done shows you that, you know, for him... It wasn't about driving the best deal for himself, you know. Or I'm not sure his agent would have been too happy with him. Um, but you know, he just wanted to to come to Celtic. You know, doesn't matter what the deal was, he just wanted to come and and play for us. And um, you know, that as a manager, that 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 excites you because that's the kind of you know um, you know players you want in the building. Yeah, um, <laughs> just get the deal done. That's not what your agent not wants. Not a mercenary. No, that's wow. what your agent wants. Your agent's not going, a mercenary. Hang fire, we may get a couple of hundred thousand yeah, more. No, as I say, that, that is refreshing. You don't see that very often. Uh, you know, Players usually tell their agent to get the best deal for them financially. Uh, maybe it wasn't. Maybe Celtic wasn't the best deal financially, but in terms of a career move with some of the other clubs he was linked with, I think that was the biggest club. So, you know, fair play to him. He comes in, he's hungry to do well. But he's got to shift Kyogo at the team, who's absolutely flying at the minute. So, again, that just adds for the competition. I think Giacomacchus will be away, but I think that just adds another dimension to Celtic, that competition between them to get that main striking role. Yeah, I think Celtic are in the box seat with this one because obviously Atlanta's uh, offer is the loan first, not the cash uh, up front, whereas Urawa Reds uh, certainly want to pay the four million up front from the reports that we're reading. Uh, so Giacomacchus still there at the moment. Pfft, listen, as the minutes tick away, he could be on his way. They might want to get him out the door, but they'll certainly get no shortage of options now Celtic in their squad in the starting 11 and on the bench um, against Dun United. Just one little thing I want to mention, I thought it was well worthy of it, um, which was the Celtic Foundation have launched something which is called the Paradise Pit Stop, where every Monday and Thursday um, between 5 and 7 o'clock, anyone can go to the lounges for a warm meal and some hot and cold drinks. Um, and that there's a place to keep the kids entertained and obviously a quiet space for homework. And I think this is Celtic reacting to the difficulty that people are facing um, with the high energy costs and, of course, the difficulty in living costs right across the board. So, I mean, I just think it deserves tremendous um, credit to Tony Hamilton and all the people at the Celtic Foundation because it doesn't matter race, creed, colour. Uh, go to Celtic Park if you're feeling the pinch. Um, and I think people uh, who obviously will be looking at it and think to themselves, you know, uh, will go along there, maybe just a wee 10, 10 minutes of getting a, a wee bite to eat, somebody to talk to, can share your problems. And of course, the kids have got somebody as well. It's a great, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, as listen, we all know how difficult it is at the minute for everyone. You know, energy costs, petrol costs, cost of living, everything's going up, food. You know, so there's a lot of families, you know, unfortunately, really, really struggling at the minute. They put food on the table, they give their kids a meal. So I, I, I totally agree. I think it's a great initiative from Celtic to to invite people in uh, to get a meal, to get a hot, hot and cold drink, and to interact with other people. There's maybe older people, pensioners, maybe living themselves, can can get along and, and get something to eat and get chatting to somebody. And no, I, I think you've got to, you've got to commend Celtic for that. I think it's a great initiative, and uh, hopefully, lots of people go along and take it up and uh, and take advantage of it. Yeah, what about Dundee United in this match? Um, of course, 
they've got to somehow put the whole thing behind them. Any players that were involved in that 9-0 defeat, um, I don't think it's going to be bothering them too much now. It's a new manager, it's a new voice in the dugout. And Liam Fox has clearly got a, a game plan for his players to make sure it's not a repeat of the last time they were at Tannadice. To make it difficult for them, we need to not allow them to get into any rhythm. But also, when we've got the ball, we need to take care of the ball because if we keep turning the ball over, um, the way that Celtic are, they can smother you and they can they can suffocate you. So we need to make sure that out of possession we're good, but in possession we're brave and we'll take the ball and, and, and cause them some problems. Okay. Um, one thing that's never gone away uh, in the whole window is. Tony Watt potentially moving, there's even a suggestion that he might go back to Belgium. Um, it's a strange one actually, I, I think Tony Watt's got a lot to offer, I don't know whether they're trying to cut their wage bill or maybe Tony Watt wants to maybe cash in on uh, you know, going somewhere else again, who knows? Yeah, I think we all thought uh, when Tony went up there that was maybe his club he could settle down at for, for two or three seasons. Uh, I don't think he's done particularly well at Dundee United, I don't think he's scored enough goals. I think when you have that outlay, I think he signed a three year deal on, a, on big money, I think you're expecting more from Tony, so whether that's Dundee United, as I said, Liam Fox and the board thinking to themselves, right, we can, if we can get him off the wage bill, we can maybe bring a couple of players in, or it's Tony thinking to himself, listen, I want to try and get another move, maybe get another few quid, then who knows, but I, I expected Tony to do better at Dundee United, I did, um, because he was absolutely brilliant at Motherwell, he looked as if he was going to get back into the Scotland squad and you know, he looked, as, he looked a real, real player at Motherwell, but it hasn't quite worked out with Dundee United. OK, some news just coming in, uh, Tom. This is from Kevin Nisbet's agent. It's uh, Quanic Sports. Uh, and it's basically a quote saying, Kevin is taking time to consider the opportunity, um, but remains unsure about making the move at this time. And this is, of course, uh, to Millwall. So he's had a change of heart. Uh, it says he's happy to focus on Hibs for the time being. Um, and obviously it goes on to say that Ryan Porch is about to seal his Hibs exit by signing for Watford in a deal um, that could uh, amount to about half a million pounds. Um, and of course, Slavin Bilic has said, you know, that deal is is a done deal. So we can take it as read that Portis is on his way. That seems to suggest that um, Kevin Nisbet's just going to stay and wait to the end of the season. Yeah, I think uh, in terms of, of Hibs, I think that... Uh, in terms of a fee, the fee's only going to go down the longer Kevin's there. I don't think there's any chance, as I said, of Kevin signing a new deal at Hibs. So, you know, if you get the player to the end of the season and his head's right and his bangs goals in, then fine. Um, but maybe Kevin's thought to himself, Millwall, I can maybe try and do a bit, get a better move than that. Maybe if I, if I stay in the Hibs team and score another seven or eight goals from now to the end of the season, I can maybe get a bigger club come in for me for bigger money. Um, so... Listen, I don't think anybody would disappoint at Hibs if he's still there, particularly the fans. Um, but from a financial, from a business point of view, eh, from Hibs, I think Hibs would have, would have preferred the money. Yeah, absolutely. OK. Um, and Dan says, Nisbet to bang a hat-trick in on Saturday. Uh, you, you, you wouldn't Just they wonder what fr frame of mind he's in, you know, to play tomorrow. Would you throw him in? Uh, he's not exactly going to be unfit, is he? No, he's not going to be unfit. I'm talking about, you know, frame of mind. He's been down. He's had a medical. He's he's nearly he's nearly left. You know, there's big clubs supposedly, you know, sniffing about for a big a big move. Does he go to and play in the game against Aberdeen? You know, does he picks up an injury. You know, that's the sort of things that would go through your head as a player. So yeah, I think uh, if he sits down with Lee Johnson and Lee Johnson says, "Listen, you ready to play? You know, are you focused? Are you ready to play?" And Kevin says, "Yes," and 100 percent he's playing. So. They'll just have to leave that conversation to them. Yeah, I would throw them in, um, despite the fact that we've got Aberdeen to win 1-0. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's been called El Sakiko. Um, regardless, there's nothing you can do. You can't get away from it. The Both managers are under a bit of pressure. Maybe one uh, more than the other. What do you think is going to happen in that match? Give us your thoughts on it. Breaking stories all the time. Just players deciding against the move. Players obviously on the move. Uh, Livingston against Hearts comes into that equation as well because, quite simply, Hearts have been involved in a spat with Blackpool that just defies belief. Um, they've released a, a statement on Blackpool's bid for Toby Civic. Uh, the club wishes to put an end to speculation surrounding the future of Toby Civic. Contrary to comments attributed to Blackpool manager Mick McCarthy earlier today, we can confirm Blackpool submitted one bid Monday at 8.33pm, which was dismissed out of hand. Subsequently, Blackpool have been told that Toby, a much-valued part of our team, is not for sale. For anyone to suggest that we have been not honest about the situation is in itself extremely disingenuous. 
The club would prefer to conduct all transfer matters in private, but we will not sit back and let the good name of Hart of Midlothian be besmirched. It's a strange one because, quite simply, sometimes along the way, you know, managers are not aware of every mover and shaker in a building. You know, whether it's a director of football, whether it's someone who is acting on behalf of Blackpool to put the bid in uh, and maybe haven't, in some cases, haven't kept the manager up to date on it. But really, I mean, this has just turned a wee bit stupid, hasn't it? Yeah, it's a mountain out of molehill, to be honest. I yeah. think that Mick McCarthy's obviously said something like, along the lines of maybe Hearts will try to encourage more bids in uh, by saying that, and they had a bid in for him but I don't think that Hearts would be encouraging him to leave I think when I mean, you look at him, his performances over the last few weeks uh, particularly in the Edinburgh Derby there he was outstanding I don't think Hearts would want to lose him so yeah. I don't see why why Hearts would encourage any bids um, so listen I don't think they'll be selling to Blackpool now anyway after that um, but I think to, I think Hearts would be delighted to keep him I think he's been He's been very, very good for him over the last month. Yeah, um, of course, uh, this uh, could be an absolute belter of a game against Livingston, but um, let's have a listen to what Robbie Nielsen had to say today. Thanks, Peter. I'm stood outside the Orium for this afternoon's Heart of Midlothian press conference. Last night, Hearts released a very strong statement in reaction to comments made by Blackpool manager Mick McCarthy and their derisory bid for Hearts defender Toby Civics. We were here this afternoon to get the thoughts of Robbie Nielsen on the situation. It, to be honest, I didn't see Mick's um, comments on it, so I can't comment on that side of it from our perspective. You know, I think the statement said it all, really, you know what I mean? What we think about things and, you know, and move forward. And every, every player's got a price you know, at the end of the day, you know, where it's just where the, the selling club is willing to accept that price and it was a bit came in for, for Toby and we didn't feel to think it was really in value for what we think the player is at and we knocked it back, so pretty simple for me. We also had the opportunity to speak to goalkeeper Xander Clark, who's done a magnificent job to step up to the mark in the absence of Craig Gordon through injury. And Xander Clark's performances have got him thinking about that number one jersey for Scotland at the next camp in March. Yeah, hopefully, you know, it's like I say, there's a there's a space that's opened up now that you know, unfortunately, Craig is um, dropping out. So, you no, know, um, obviously, missed the last couple of camps through not playing a lot. So to be back playing. You know, it gives me a chance, just need to try and do as well as I can at club level and, and you know, hopefully the gives the manager something to think about for, for the next camp. Um, as I say, there's a there's a space opened up there now and if I can keep playing as well as I am, then, you know, who knows. Yeah, roll on. Um, I actually think he's been great since he came in. Yep, I think it was a great signing for Hearts. Um, I think obviously for him, I think a few moves kind of fell through uh, down south and he was kind of left in limbo a little bit. Hearts came in. You know, he had to play second fiddle, obviously, to Craig Gordon. Um, unfortunately for Craig, he's picked up a bad injury, but for Xander, it's great for him to come in. And uh, as I say, he's getting regular games now, he's playing well. And uh, if you're playing well with a big club like Hearts, at domestic level, then you're going to be in and around the, the Scotland squad. So I, I, think he's, I think he's a cert to be in it if he's fit. Although, he must have got up uh, the other morning there and had a wee look at Craig Gordon's Instagram and thought, oh no, calm yourself, <laughs> slow down. You you six weeks. <laughs> slow down, you don't want to rush yourself with a double leg break, you know. Craig Gordon might be back with it. I can't, I can't game. believe him, can you? No, brilliant. I mean, Craig's, you know, he's kept himself extremely fit. You don't play until you're 40. If you're not, you don't laugh to yourself, you're not extremely fit. Yeah. Um, so, as I said in the show the other day there, uh, a leg break can be you know, better than a than a bad ligament injury or a knee injury, um, cruciate or Achilles. You know, if it's a, if it's a, just a clean break, you can you can get get it healed up pretty quickly. So he looks as if he's well ahead of schedule. Yeah, strangely enough, you're talking about Hearts holding on to Toby Civic, which I'm delighted. I I really want to see them hold on to as many of the uh, their best players as possible and try and fend off uh, as many bids as possible because a stronger Hearts is, is what we all need. We certainly want them to do better in Europe, um, maybe get a Europa League next season. The other thing about it, I mean, I don't know if uh, Robbie's been on the super lagger, but he's uh, he's talking about the fact that they start, they start off, they want to win the league. Um, certainly want to catch Rangers for you know get a second place if not this season then next season. So he's got ambitions. He keeps mentioning that thing, and I'm saying to myself, well, you know the club's so well run, it just needs you would you would really need to start increasing the quality. But you know I love his ambition. I love him coming out with lines like that in a press conference. Yeah, I think Hearts in a great place at the minute. I think the confidence is high right throughout the club, and um, they've had a great season so far. Miles ahead of Hibs. Um, they are 
they've got a great squad of players. The recruitment's been spot on. You know, I mean, you look at the players that they've recruited. They've recruited a lot of English-speaking players, uh, British players, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, Snodgrass, East Shankland. They've got a couple of guys from Australia, Devlin Rolls. So they've went down, you know, a different route from an Aberdeen or a Hibs, where they've signed foreign players, maybe younger players. Yeah. Um, and I think it's worked out perfectly for Hearts. And I think that both Aberdeen and Hibs have got to get back to that as well. You know, signing proven players. You know that you know are going to be good in the league, um, rather than kind of project players or form players. So, no, I, I think that the recruitment at Hearts has has been spot on, and if it continues like this, you know, I think that they they can push closer to Rangers and Celtic, uh, particularly Rangers. I think Celtic are miles ahead of Rangers at the minute. I think Hearts can push closer to Rangers, but do I see, see them finishing second anytime soon? No. Yeah. No, I don't know. Uh, Gallant says uh, Craig Gordon must be due to retire. Uh, Gallant, I think you'll find that. Craig Gordon's like Tom Brady. I think he could be on the verge of well, another well, four-year deal. Buffon's still playing in the Serie A. He's what, 44, 45? <laughs> Players should get him a game of four-year deal. I was else. just about to say, goalkeepers are strange, yeah. strange people. You only have to listen to Ruffy on They don't do a lot of physical work. I know they've got to keep themselves agile and whatever yeah. and, and fit enough, but it's not as if they're running about the park for 90 minutes. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, I, I have a lot of time for him, uh, Craig. I think he's a great lad. Um, fantastic goalkeeper and I just wonder where his position will be in the Scotland greats uh, of the goalkeepers uh, when he eventually does uh, hang up the gloves but absolutely fantastic uh, to say the least um, as far as the opposition is concerned well this week I think what we're hanging on is every word David Martindale on the Stenhouse Muir Mole on the recording his interview well I was just about to say for the man who recorded um, his uh, blast at the players at half time in the game against Stenhouse Muir uh, I'm sure he was suffering the wrath of uh, the Stenhouse Muir officials for doing it but it certainly went viral um, we sent our man Adam out to get David Martindale's thoughts Thanks, Peter. I'm outside of the Tony Macaroni Arena in Livingston to speak to David Martindale, who has gone semi-viral on social media this week after some audio was leaked from his dressing room away at Stennis Muir at the weekend as he appeared to be lambasting his team for going into half-time 1-0 down to Stennis Muir. So we got the manager's reaction to his half-time team talk. That was the quiet part, I think, you heard. But um, I, I manage in all different ways. I'm not adverse to giving the boys a bow up the bum when they, I, I think they need a bow up the bum. Saturday I felt they need a bow up the bum. We needed a kickstart, we needed a jolt and that was it. There's other times you need to come in, you need to motivate the players in a different way. There's other times you need to come in, you need to pick the players up, you need to give them a cuddle. I'm not adverse to doing all styles of management. On Saturday I felt we were very, very passive. I think I said it on camera after the game. It's disappointing that that came out because it's obviously been a private conversation between me and the players and somebody within Stenhouse Muir's chosen to record the half-time team talk, which I find very disappointing, if I'm honest. But am I bothered about the content yet? No, not at all. Not at all. Martindale was also very vocal about the club's finances and the impact that COVID-19, as well as the introduction of VAR, has had on the club. I think you're now seeing, you even look at St Mirren's um, accounts, I think you're now seeing the Covid reality biting home now. There was a lot of one-off costs that we inherited through Covid in terms of the testing and the travelling also was problematic. So you're going to get these one-off costs that are going to get shown in this year's accounts and I've had a meeting with John, I've had a meeting with other board members and it's just about trying to keep the budget as low as possible. They've been very, very good with me. They're just saying, well, if you need to add to it, add to it, David. But it'd be great if you could try and bring the baseball down a little bit because where does the extra money to pay the Scottish Government back? Where does that money come from? Where does the, well, this year we're £85,000 for VAR. Where, where does that £85,000 come from like a club like Livingston? That's a good point. Listen, I have to say, though, if they're asking him to cut the budget, the game's a bogey. He's working wonders there. Yeah, he is. Um, first and foremost, I agree with him about, the, about recording the conversation. That was poor. I think, you know, you never ever... Nobody would ever do that. I think it's all, that's all social media now. Somebody recording that, he put it on social media. Um, Tam, you, I, I think Tam you can't go out anywhere without the fear of somebody just yes, filming you yes. so they can get hits. Yeah, people are just interested in getting clicks and hits. And Although, to be fair... Even I think it came out well. We, 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 I was going to say to you, we in the media, 
you know, we want to obviously cover as much as possible. You want to have things that will bring a smell to people's face. There's a bit of controversy. We all put out our own social media feeds. So um, I agree with you. I think, <laughs> I, do you know what? See, when I heard it, mm. I thought, okay, somebody's done that. I agree with you, poor. But then I thought to myself, Thank you, God. There are still managers out there yep. who can leather their players. Yep, and that's what it's all about. He's right. You can't do that every week. You know, I've played under managers who, for six, seven weeks, you know, if I think, even if things were going poorly, you'd be coming in and give it a then it, then it would just be a rocket. Yeah. And then you would get a reaction. If you were giving that, that speech every week, players would just, they would just end up getting sick of it and, and turn a defeat, it, a defeat it. So... I think that uh, I think you've got to give that to players sometimes, um, and, and he's right. You've got to give them a cuddle sometimes. That's man management. That's the best managers are the best man managers. So I've, I've not got a problem with that. But he's right about the costs. Uh, but if, if you know if they're thinking about maybe trimming their wage, Bill Livingston, you know you, you'd think to yourself, well, I mean, because I would think that Livingston, I've probably got the the lowest budget in the league. Yeah, or maybe in the bottom two, or at least the bottom two in terms of pl paying players. So. The job he's doing there, David Martindale, is is incredible. I've got an incredible job, but Livingston <laughs> won Hearts too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think Hearts might win it as well. I'm going to go for 1-0 to Hearts. I think Hearts will take a big, big support along to Livingston. You know, when Hearts and Hibs are going well, you know they, they'll, they'll fill the sand, they'll, they'll take three or 4,000 there, and I think that'll be the I difference. Think, I think they're taking a right good few. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, listen, I've, I've played in games there with Hibs where basically it was three, three sides for Hibs fans. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and even one of the games I played with Dundee, it was it was like a relegation game. There was three sides, so I think it's about five thousand. Yep, and that is going to drive hard. You know what that tells you, by the way? They are absolutely buying into what the manager's doing. The they football. are, but as I said, if, if when Hibs and Hearts are going well, you know, when they're sitting in third and results are going well, easily take four or five thousand to Livingston, taking a full stand down to maybe a command at St Man. So no, I think that 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 support from Hearts will edge up one 0 Yeah, Kevin Ferrier. I'm, I'm worried about him, Tam, because I'm, I'm I'm wondering if he's a cousin of yours or somebody that you know. He says uh, uh, Peter and Ruffy or Peter and Tam. Um, so there you are. And then he says, "Nay, the first one sounds better." <laughs> So, uh, just wondering uh, what it's all about, and uh, I have to say, I've got hearts just to edge it. What about Ross County? Um, this one, I mean, if you, I mean, if you were living uh, down in Kilmarnock, you're saying to yourself, "Am I going to make the journey for this one?" It's, it's the battle at the bottom. It's, it's, it's one of those ones where you're going to have to scrape, kick, fight to try and get something from it. I think this is an enormous game for Ross County. They're starting to just. There's starting to a little gap developing uh, between them and maybe two or three other clubs above them. So I think the home game against Kilmarnock, who you know are going to be in the bottom two or three all season, I think it's a real big game for Ross County. I think if Ross County can win, you know, they're back in it. They can drag a couple of clubs back in. Obviously, Dundee United playing Celtic, St. Johnson playing Rangers, so they can maybe drag them back into it. But I think it's a very difficult game to call. I think Kilmarnock will go up there and make it difficult. You know what Derek's teams are like. You know, they're stuffy, hard to beat. How many goals do you think Ross County have scored in the league this season? Five. <laughs> Fifteen. Was it? Fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah, I mean, it's the, they're just, they've just been so poor and I can't believe it. Command, you, I think Command have only picked up one point away from home. Or could yeah, be wrong. The one in the last five <laughs> league games. So, two draws, two defeats. I, it's got all the makings of an absolute classic 0-0. Yeah, um, and I'm who like, would bet against Eamon Brophy? Just signed for County, scoring against his old yeah, side. Yeah, it could be perfect for him. Uh, as he had a, I thought he'd went to St Merlin and done really well. I think that was a, it was a strange move. You know, he was in about the Scotland squad and he, he signed for St Merlin on a free. I think St Merlin would have pushed the boat out in terms of wages. I think he'd be well paid at St Merlin. So I think St Merlin will be happy that he's off the wage bill. They've maybe got a couple of players in now. Um, but maybe, they, you know, a wee bit of freshness for Brophy up at Ross County, a manager, Malky, who maybe put his arm round his shoulder and tell him he's, you know, he's a man, he's going to score goals for him. Sometimes as a striker, I know that myself, when you move to a different club, different manager, different voice, you know, you can get a wee boost for that. So I hope Eamon does well up there, but I think that'll be one each at a game. Kelly are the only team without an away win in the Premiership this season. That They've tells you everything. Uh, and I've got them too. <laughs> I've got them. This is one of these weeks where I am I either going to be firing in 21 points or I'm going to be dismal on four. <laughs> um, I've got Kelly to win by a goal wow. to nil in a dismal game. I'm going to go for one each. I thought nil-nil, yeah. but I think one each. Okay. Uh, St Mirren against Motherwell. St Mirren, now... 
let me just tell you about perceptions because, you know, we had Tony Fitzpatrick in a couple of weeks ago and all is rosy in the St Mirren Garden. Everybody is actually saying, yeah, he's Stephen Robinson doing a good job. They managed to, the only team to manage to defeat Celtic in the league. They've won one win in the last 10 league games, five draws, four defeats. Um, which is not a great run. Draws are killing them, yeah, but you know, you, you actually look at St Mirren and you think, okay, everything's going well, that's fine, but one win in the last 10 league games. Yeah, it's not a great run. Yeah. Um, and the cup penalty shootout went over Dundee. Yep, so uh, struggling to score goals a wee bit at the minute. Um, you know, and they'll be trying to freshen it up. I know they recall young Kieran Offord, a young striker from Alloa, so maybe young Kieran will get a, will get a, a wee chance. A guy I coached down at Bradhurst, a good striker. So I don't know. I don't know about this game as well. This, this seems to be a very, very tight game. Motherwell have been decent away from home this season. They've been dismal at home. I think away from home, away from the, the punters getting on their back, I think that they can go away and concentrate a wee bit more on the football rather than getting slaughtered for the stands. So I'm going to go for one each again this game. I think this is this is going. This looks like a stick on draw for me as well. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting one. I've got St Mirren uh, to win it by two goals to one. Johnny says it's going to be St Mirren nil, Motherwell two, um, and uh, Dan is saying any truth in Stuart Finlay to Hibs time. Yes, yes. And the other one is I think it's Bailey Wright to Sunderland. I don't know Hibs have tried to bring both of them in. So I would hope that Stuart Finlay and Bailey Wright would, would both be Hibs players by the end of the window. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, of course, uh, Niall Kane's hoping that they can get Denzaki uh, all the clearance for him to get him into Motherwell. I think everybody now, I think, I mean, where are we? We're on, what's, what's the date, Tam, as I look? 27th. I think between now and that transfer window closing, one player, two players for teams at the bottom could be absolutely crucial um, to whether they're going to be in a playoff or the relegation. It's so tight down there. Yeah, it is. And uh, Lee Johnson was speaking about it earlier. You know, a couple of wins, you can jump from eighth, seventh or eighth and you know, fourth. You know, it's, it's very, very tight from, from fourth down. And as you said, you know, one or two players could make a big difference in your season. Uh, supporters want to see new signings in the January window, particularly when team, you know, their team's struggling. So you're hoping that the, the Japanese boy comes into Motherwell. You know, you look at the success over at Celtic, you know, and it seems to be a market that a lot of teams are, are going into. So it's interesting to see Motherwell go into that market as well. I said I said that on Wednesday, I'd rather, you know, you go and try and sign guys like that who are, you know, exciting, you know, unknown, rather than signing guys, you know, at 30, 35, who have been bouncing about in England or the lower leagues in Scotland. So... I think that's an exciting signing for Mullow and uh, they'll, be, they'll be desperate to see what you can do. Yeah, absolutely. I've got St Mirren to win 2-1. Where are you, yeah, where one did you go for? Yep, OK. Um, as far as uh, the weekend's concerned, Tam, I'm thoroughly enjoying the Saturday show. It's good because I think because we've got that wee bit of extra time, it gives you and I a chance to have a right good noise up, um, have a laugh, argument with each other. <laughs> um, and the scores come in and we've got reporters out yeah. at the grounds. Um, we're making new signings, reporters coming to join us, going to games. And we're getting managers and players and the reaction right after the games no it's brilliant the Saturday show has been tremendous I think that uh, for us you know you sit and watch all the results coming in speak about it you know and uh, interact with the supporters you know you're getting interviews at half time full time you're getting you know managers you know reactions before anyone else um, coming straight in from a live feed so no, the Saturday show has been great and uh, it's, it's only going to get better. Yeah, absolutely. You can join us four o'clock till six. Uh, you've got that chance to join Tam and myself and all the reporters giving you the uh, half-time and full-time uh, reports from the grounds and we're going to build on that even more. And of course, Tam's hoping that there's a good few trips in the Champions League as well and the old uh, PLZ Soccer. Uh, if you download the PLZ Soccer app, you'll get all the breaking football stories. You can actually watch the programme live on your phone on the app and you can submit um, anything, your thoughts. You could record yourself um, just basically giving us your point of view in a video and we can put it on the show and have a bit of a, a blether with you. Uh, and over and above that, we've got lots of guests coming on and one-to-one, -one, some really special ones coming up uh, that I think you're going to enjoy. So there's lots of unique uh, video content. And then coming up, Tam, I think there's a, a little feature coming up in the next couple of weeks. I think you're really going to enjoy the challenge. Mm -hmm. um, which is basically all of us going head to head in various challenges um, that involve skill, whether it's your legs, your feet, your hands. That's all I'm saying to you. Um, obviously. 
It's a wee bit of worry now in your face. There is. Um, so uh, there's lots of fun like that. And of course, we'll get more and more coming out on TikTok as well as uh, Twitter and Facebook. And the competition, just in case you've missed it, here's what you can win this week. LZ Soccer has teamed up with one of Scotland's leading sports artists, Geo Thompson, to give you the chance to win the signed print of Celtic Star Jota. To win with the chance of winning this fantastic prize, all you have to do is answer this simple question. Which country does Jota come from? Leave your answer in the comment section below and to double your chances of winning, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Good luck. Yeah, good luck with that. And I tell you, next week's prize is an absolute belter. I was over in Madrid. Uh, we got a Luka Modric replica at Real Madrid Champions League shirt. Uh, so it's well worth winning. It's mm. not bad stuff. It's not bad for the five or size, by the way, unless you want to frame it. I was, you might imagine turning up the fives with that. I was just a bit of white I mean, I can see it the other now, but um, it would look fantastic. The only problem with that, Tam, and obviously I'm hoping to return in good fettle in the fives and the elevens now that the old hip is fixed, but I think if you wear that, you stand out. I always worried about guys who turn up in the in the full kit, you know, and you think to yourself, I wonder if you, I wonder if, I, I wonder if you can, I wonder if you can actually kick the ball. So I worried about those kind of guys. Do you know? Gear, all the gear, no idea. Yeah, yeah I've absolutely. Seen a few of at the five um, yeah. I can remember a part saying a whole lad of us turned up at a, a five sides and we played a team and two or three of them had the white boots on and all the kit they looked Look immaculate handy. and we all looked as if we had uh, basically come off. Uh, um, uh, I'm trying to come, I'm trying to come up with a film, The Hangover, <laughs> after the tiger has eaten half of them. Um, we looked as if we were rough on a night out, and we absolutely battered them. Aye. But um, you know, th I'll tell you one thing: it's an absolutely cracking prize, uh, and I hope you can uh, get involved with it next week as well. There's lots more to give away uh, as we take you right through to the summer months. Um, now, uh, the question from the, the competition, uh, the quiz at the start. Uh, Everton had a fantastic say. Let me take you through their side uh, in the question and when the last time Everton actually won at the top flight English league because, of course, they're in the doldrums at the moment trying desperately to avoid relegation. It looks as if Sean Dyche is the man that they're going to hire to try and get them away from the bottom three. Uh, Neville Southall, Derek Mountfield, Kevin Ratcliffe, who I interviewed, um, he was a great lad, um, Neil Adams, uh, Alan Harper, uh, Kevin Langley, Kevin Sheedy, Trevor Stephen, Paul Power, Adrian Heath and Graham Sharp um, was their team. That was not a bad team. Um, and remember, previous to that, they did have Andy Gray in there and they won the Cup Winners Cup as well. But this is the last time they won the league. So it was a year. 1987. Oh, I said 88. I knew it was late 80s. Yeah. I remember. Yeah, I seen it. They had an absolute... Adrian, I remember playing against Adrian Heath is now a, a, he's now a coach in the MLS, a head coach. I think he's at, might be at Minnesota now. Oh, did you play I against remember him? Playing, he, he was a co head coach of Orlando uh, City when right. I was at Rochester. And I, I, I spoke to him after the game. Um, seemed a great lad as well, but they, he's done really well over there for himself. He's coached a few American teams. Now he's... The head coach in the MLS, Adrian Heath. Uh, Adrian Heath. Yeah, uh, there's a good, good couple of points here I think that you wouldn't have been aware of, Tam, but I certainly was at the time because I thought it was well, it was a tragedy first and foremost that prompted English clubs to be banned from Europe. Alan Woods, well done, you get 1987. Uh, Gallant says they, they won the league in 85, yes they did, and 87. Uh, and this other one was Hugh Scott makes a very good point. He says, Sir, uh, Peter, uh, they weren't allowed to play in the European Cup the next season because the English teams were banned. That was 85. Heisel? Uh, Heisel prompted mm -hmm. a ban. And I, I honestly think, when you looked at the Liverpool and the Everton side of the mid to late 80s, I actually think, you know, they would have been there or thereabouts to win the European Cup. They were that good, uh, both sides. Um, you know, uh, English clubs were dominating European football um, in the early 80s, all the way through... Um, Not in the Forest and the teams like Aston Villa as well. Yeah, you know? Villa won it in 82, yeah. so yeah. They, they were right. absolutely dominant. And I just thought the, the team that Kenny Dalglish built um, for Liverpool at that time with, you know, Barnes, Peter Beardsley, uh, yeah, fantastic. Even John Aldridge was in there. That's how good they were. Um, but it was absolutely unbelievable. You might share that view, you might not. Um, anyway, that's the answer. It was 1987. Do join us if you can tomorrow on the programme. It's a results service from four to six. Tam and I will be sitting here 
on the couch discussing the games, the half-time reports will come in, the full-time, we'll get managers and players on giving us their reaction and we'll look ahead to the games that take place on the Sunday as well. It's uh, certainly enjoyable and we'll get lots and lots of people supporting us for that. Hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel and don't forget to enter the competition as well. We've got Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, all sorts of great content going out. If you download the app, it's all there at your fingertips. Ruffy will be back on Monday, Tam. Um, I know that he's had a couple of drinks in here and you've been spotted just moving away quickly after a couple of droplets were in there. <laughs> but the big man, the big man will be back uh, happily uh, in a good mood and in good fettle on Monday if you can join us. But uh, if you are at a loose end on a Saturday, why not join us? Four o'clock on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. And in the morning, we've got a preview, which you can look. Uh, Tam and myself are joining up with Kerry Pollock for her Saturday preview show of all that's happening in the Scottish Premiership and beyond. So from Tam and from myself, Peter Martin, thanks for watching.